Hi, welcome back everybody, it's Mike Newton down here at London Golf Academy. I've got a new uh, product to review for you and it's the TaylorMade M5 Tour driver. So typically uh, TaylorMade will always bring out a Tour version, a smaller CC capacity head, so it's a 435, a bit more of that Tour inspired look. So we're going to test that on GC Quad, obviously give you my feedback as always and see how this driver performs. Okay, so M5 Tour, so 435cc, so the standard M5 and M6 are 460, so typically we're seeing a more compact head behind the golf ball. Very much noticeable as I put that down from the face to the back edge is much more compact as what you would see in, as I say, the M5 or M6. So who, which sort of golf is this generally sort of aimed at? Generally, it's more for the better player, somebody with a bit more speed, somebody's trying to get that launch down and get that spin down. And maybe what we saw with typically M5 standard and M6, they were quite low spinning products. So it'd be interesting to see if this goes lower spin again, and is that bit too low spin? Um, but obviously we'll see. I'm guessing there might be a little bit of level of forgiveness we might sort of just sacrifice with the head obviously size just changing but sitting down that body of golf ball I'm a big fan of how the M5 M6 look with that matte black uh, carbon composite sort of look now slim in the silver section that red sort of trim around the back edge I think looks stunning and this sits really square so I think if any golfers out there who hate to see the club face point a little bit close I'm one of them this um, definitely doesn't. It sits very, very suitable neutral. Got this in a nine degree. I've got this set as a nine degree standard in the lie and the face angle. Obviously, we've got some dialing to do with the loft sleeve as well as the sort of weights on the bottom. Let's get this first one hit. Does sit lovely behind the golf ball. Yes, that's come out really really sort of neutral there very nice sort of flight looks to be fairly sort of penetrating there you get a very sort of muted sound which we again we've seen with the m5 with that composite tone mix not seeing a lot of that uh, very loud acoustics very sort of muted okay so now i've got i've got this fitted um in one of the stock options so they offer two stock op options in the tour uh, M5, which is the Tensai Orange, and then this Hazardous Smoke. And I've got the Hazardous Smoke in here, which is a 70 gram in a 6.5 flex, which is extra stiff. As I say, just got that as standard uh, sort of length here. Um, I, I do like the look of that club behind the golf ball. It does look a bit harder to hit because of that small compact head. So it instantly to me, it feels like, right, I need to make sure I get the middle of the club face here. But I do like the shaping of the head. It's very sort of um, that sort of rounded, uh, traditional looking shape in a way. Okay, I was a little bit higher in the flight. I felt like I struck that a bit higher up that club face. Is that a line ball? Oh, not bad. And that's got out there. That's got out there. So sort of 285 carry running out at 308. So good hit on that particular shot. Definitely a little bit higher up that club club face. Now, obviously we can dial in the weights in the bottom. I've left them pretty neutral at the moment with one uh, one weight in the furthest front section of that um, T track. Um, or a very wide track as I maybe sort of call it now and then the other one is more to the back of that middle track um, now obviously you can put options of putting both weights right in the back in that furthest sort of heel and toe section which will make the club in its more forgiving option in terms of creating a higher MOI less twisting and maybe a little bit more forgiving that might be a popular option with it being more of a low spin characteristics ahead um, you might not need those weights throwing forward because I just think if you put it in its most powerful position um, in terms, or its, its mode in a way, in terms of putting both those weights in that front section, then with I think the size of the head and both weights forward, if you're going to miss the middle of the golf club, I think you're going to get punished pretty severely, I would sort of say. So I haven't got it in its most forgiving, but having said that, I haven't got it in its most uh, unforgiving setting. Uh, but two sort of nice straight sh shots to start with. I'll try and keep that run going. Again, that's a good connection. I've just leaked that up the right-hand side there. Um, felt a really good strike, but again, the, the feedback through the club isn't great in my opinion there. It just, it just feels so muted, so 
just all I can think of is just feels a dead sort of feel like you don't get a lot of feedback through the club itself and I can feel where I'm hitting it on the club face but I don't know it just feels like there's no spring it's just like a dead board as you hit it um, again I think the cue sticks will sort of give a very much um, a feel for that type of uh, strike Ooh, I've ripped that I've just pulled that up that left side but I've absolutely ripped that one that felt much much better there that's 304 but I have hit that up that left hand side that's spun at 1900 on its spin just overturn that a bit up the left felt really good that one to be fair that one felt much better I think it's a difference there I've struck that one a little bit lower in the club face the other's been a little bit near that top edge which does tend to give you that very sort of dead feel as you're striking it um, which I think is what's maybe just give me that little bit of feedback here that was a little bit lower it felt like it was a little bit lower in the club face all right I've just turned that up the left side but the feel of that was much much better than those first couple okay so what I'm just going to do uh, in this next ball here I'm going to move both those weights in that furthest forward uh, position so basically putting in its strongest uh, sort of mode in a way and um, so with the 435 cc it's typically moving the cg further forward than the traditional m5 at 460 cc i'm now moving both weights in that furthest forward position so again pushing center of gravity as further forward as it possibly can so should in theory slightly lower on a launch and a slightly less spin feels great still has that little element of that sort of slightly dead feel and that looks to be a pretty big ball that's spun at 2200 307 yards so looked to be slightly more penetrating didn't really see a massive drop on that ball speed again I think uh, sorry that spin number I think um, obviously the, the strike location can change that spin as we all, all sort of know but I definitely a little bit more penetrating on that flight uh, that I've I physically sort of saw. Okay, so we'll get one more hit and we'll check some numbers. Again, there's that slightly high in the face strike. It definitely gives a different feel to that driver complete. That feels more in that dead feel bracket. I think that's just more through that strike as a big hit. 315 that's one at 1800 carrying it 288 through the air again i think that's more that strike that's pulling that spin down probably more so than the really the weight sort of going forward but let's look at those numbers a little bit more detail and see how m5 tour driver is working okay so let's look at some numbers and see how m5 driver in the tour is performing so averaging ball speed at 163.4 you can see peaking there at 165 that's when i move that weight forward i got a really good strike on that one um so just peak that up a little bit but as i said that i did get a 165 on that first shot hit there also averaging launch at 10.5 see that launch just fluctuates as i hit it slightly higher in that club face we tend to see that ball uh, just launch a little bit higher again that's through more my strike than um changing weights really than anything um averaging the spin at 2200 which is good so that's a good number for me and the last couple of hit which is the top two rows there was when i moved the weight more forward so i've got a 2270 and an 1870 there again you know probably a little bit more my strike so again i got around 22s with that weights in that other position and also a 19 there so it hasn't really changed massively in terms of moving that weight in that forward section um i would probably personally would like to maybe see the two weights maybe more in the back position might up the spin a little bit but i don't think it'll do too much because of the 435 cc in the head and how the head is all creating a little bit more of that low sort of spin characteristics uh carry number there averaging at uh 281 through the air and averaging my total distance around that 305 mark so some some good numbers there um i'm quite pleased with how that's sort of spinning again the feel aspect is another thing we'll talk about that in a minute but some fairly decent numbers there from the m5 tour okay so there we go there's tailor-made m5 tour so i think it's quite a niche 
club. Um, not many golfers will probably go into this. It's probably more going to be those stronger players who trying to who maybe got quite a lot of club head speed, looking for that more piercing, trying to lower that that spin a little bit more, and probably the golf who really enjoys that more compact look. I think that's probably the biggest thing that will draw a golfer into this particular uh, drive in terms of the tour. Is sometimes that you know these um, modern ones at 460. They, sometimes they look pretty big, don't they, from that front to the back. So the tour definitely look, looks more compact. So any golfer that would like that compact and tends to be what I find through golfers that maybe have, have, have played a long time and they always remember those older drivers that were very sort of compact and then maybe just struggled a little bit to take or, or to move into the more modern product which at 460 is sometimes quite big into on the end of that club and uh, a few <laughs> guys sort of relate to a bit of a walk on the end of a stick in a way and some look much obviously bigger than others so I think that's probably where the most golfers will go to tour would be just because of the look of it and the shaping of that head. Let me know your thoughts guys, M5 Tour, is that something that you might sort of go and try? Um, as a feel, it, it, it wasn't the most responsive, having said that when I cut it high in that face it did feel quite dead to me but uh, the numbers were still really good, speed was pretty decent there, getting it out there so it's more of a feel aspect which again is very different from person to person so as my message is always to you, go out there and test yourselves and make sure you get fitted for them. Okay, thanks for watching, watch, guys. Always appreciate watching the videos, always. If you enjoyed the video and haven't subscribed, then I'd love you to do so. So please hit that subscribe button, then you won't miss another video going forward. If you also ring that bell icon, then you'll get a notification as soon as a video lands on my channel. You'll get a pinged, and you'll be the one of the very first ones to watch it. Hook up on my social media platforms, both Instagram and Twitter, and both handles there are at MNGolfCoach, and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.